Good morning. Welcome to worship with Davidson College Presbyterian Church. The service was pre-recorded for all of our services on Sunday, May 2nd. It won't take long for you to notice something is different today. Over 50 middle school and high school students were part of creating worship. Over 20 of them will appear in the video. When's the last time you saw 20 teenagers up as early as 8.30? It's a miracle. All of the names and faces on the screen are a reminder that we are a church for all ages and a church that keeps its commit commitments to love one another. If we can show that love but to you by assisting you with any of your needs, please reach out to us. One of the pastors will return your call. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the service. Because not live from Davidson, it's Sunday morning! Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in the Easter season. It's good to worship our Lord God together. So let's sing our praises beginning with Shout to the North. the west. 
so good to see all of you, even if it's just on Zoom. Hope to see you guys next Sunday. Y'all have a great week. Bye. 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 We come together today from far and wide to gather in the name of God. To better connect to God, ourselves, and each other. We learn not to take our connections for granted and to always be grateful. By becoming closer to God, we learn to love each other and ourselves. And as we seek to become closer to God, we come to Psalm 22 to, that guides us. Everyone who searches for the Lord will praise him, for all the world is his kingdom. For the poor will eat and be satisfied and your heart shall live forever. This ball of yarn is a symbol of our connection. God is always with us every step of the way. Let us worship God. to live through you and your love. You show us compassion, forgiveness, and love. You have sent your one and only son to show us to love our neighbors, and sometimes we forget this. Sometimes we judge others, even though we know you sent Jesus to love us, and for everyone to rejoice in love. You are the main source of joy, and all good comes from you. There is no fear in your love, for love drives out fear. Dear God, forgive us and strengthen us so that we may remember that you are love. when we forget to live through the teachings of Christ, who shows us compassion, forgiveness, and love. Thanks be to God for this grace. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Please take this time to share God's love with those around you. Peace be with you. And, and also, also with you. Welcome, family and friends. It's about other quarter way through worship, so it must be time for announcements. After 14 months of pandemic worship, you know what to do now. Go to the comments section and find the online friendship pad so you can register that year in worship. Leave a like or a register reaction to help spread the news and look for a link for donations to help continue this program. This is one of our last weeks of pre-recorded worship. 
we return to in-person worship on May 23rd. To help staff our plan, please fill out the five question, five minute survey that was sent out in the weekly email and is in the bulletin. A link to the survey is in the chat and comment section of this video. As you can tell, it is Youth Sunday. Over 50 middle school and high school students helped create this service and our 20 are on your screen. Since this service is being shown three times, all of our kids are assuming this counts as three Sundays of church for us, but not for you. We want to see you back next week. Between now and then, there's a lot going on. The work in the sanctuary is heating up as they prepare to start removing cracked woodwork. The Covenant class, which is available by Zoom and online, is continuing its conversation with a local rabbi as they talk about the Hebrew Bible and the age of Me Too. And we still need people to provide food and personal hygiene supplies for our neighbors in need. The bulletin is full of information on ways to serve our neighbors. We're glad you joined us today. We look forward to see you in person on May 23rd and online between now and then. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. O oh God, by your spirit tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to learn from Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Come and see. Please, come and sit with me. My name is Jack, and today I have an interesting story to share with you. And this story is from the Bible in the book of Acts. There once was a man named Philip. Philip was teaching people about Jesus in a crowded city, and he was one of God's helpers. God told Philip one day, leave the busy city go on a lonely desert road. He ran so fast, he caught up with the African official who he was sent to help. And this African official was very important, and he was learning about the Bible, but he was confused by the words inside of it. So he asked Philip to help him understand. Philip sat with the official and taught him about Jesus. The official's eyes brightened. May I be baptized? He asked Philip. Philip said he would baptize him. The official was happy to hear this good news. And after Philip baptized the official, he was filled with joy because he was now a child of God. After that, the official went on to teach his friends about Jesus. Do you remember when you were baptized? The cool water on your head? how you just feel God's presence. And just as the official asked for help, you can always ask your parents, teachers, or friends for help when you get confused, especially about the Bible. Even I get confused by it all the time. But here's my challenge for you. God gives us the power to love others, so I challenge you to use your superpower to help someone else this week. I will be reading Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all of the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll be reading John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. It is June, and you and your friend Russell are on a trip to the beautiful Florida coast. You get to the hotel room and find that not only is your phone at 1%, but Russell's is too. No need to panic yet, because you both packed a charger somewhere in your overly stuffed suitcase beneath the coat you packed for when it suddenly drops 70 degrees. Both chargers look the same, so you and your pal Russell plug in your phones and go get something to eat. Two hours later, you come back to find that Russell's phone is fully charged, but that yours is still at 1% due to the worn out cord that only works when placed at a 34 degree angle. Connection is important especially for humans. When we were all quarantined last March, we found ourselves struggling in that area. According to the Canadian Health Association, social connection can lower anxiety and depression, help us regulate our emotions, lead to higher self-esteem and empathy, and actually improve our immune systems. To fill the void that corona has caused in our hearts, we seek connection wherever we can find it. For some, this is an unhealthy connection where we are relying on a partner for happiness or enjoying the boost of endorphins that come from eating chocolate. Time passes and you find that hole in your heart is still empty. Depressing, I know, but there is something that will fill your heart all the way up to the brim and never drop below. This isn't some new diet or pill, but the love of God. For God's love is your food. We see this idea in our reading from the Gospel of John today. The branches representing the children of Christ are connected to Jesus, the vine. The branches on a vine rely on the roots to send nutrients to the vine to keep them alive. To have more fruit be produced, pruning must occur. This involves trimming off the weak branches to promote growth and getting rid of the dead ones. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Such a powerful takeaway from John 15. Jesus was talking to a crowd of people who understood agriculture. But maybe if he was teaching today, he would change his metaphor to something we could all understand, like charging our phones. By sticking with God and not taking a different route, God will stick with you. Just as there are branches connected to the vine of life, there are some that are disconnected. Those that are connected will be pruned back for more growth to occur as well as causing a deeper reliance on the vine. Those that are disconnected and not bearing fruit will be cut off so that they do not inhibit the growth of those who are connected. A branch that is disconnected from the vine doesn't stop producing fruit because the vine is punishing it. It stops producing because it's not connected to its source of life. In other words, it's a natural consequence. We, the children of Christ, are the branches. Some of us are dead, not connected to Christ anymore, not relying on Him for nourishment and going against what God has told us. Meanwhile, some are vivacious, attached closely to the Word of God, breathing in His Spirit as if it were oxygen leaning on Him instead of our own understanding, which is tricky because we hear all around us that we can do anything we want as long as we try hard and believe. And to an extent, that's true. But it's definitely not the whole story. We'll deplete ourselves if we do this. 
but God is the source of energy that won't run out. Because when we're plugged into God, we're spending our energy on the things that we're meant to spend them on. Receiving God's love, loving God in return, and loving others. Along the way, if we ask God to share his fruits of the Spirit with us, he may receive. Galatians 5 verses 22 through 23 specifies what these fruits are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are all beautiful traits that would bring the separated world caused by politics and violence and discrimination together as one. If connecting with Christ, meaning devoting your time usually spent scrolling on Instagram to reading the Word of God and embracing what He has to say and living the truth every day, as well as leaning on Him for guidance when you hit a fork or bump in the road, obeying Him and sharing the good news brings love to others and glory to the Father. Why are we seeking temporary and band-aid-like things to fill the void in our hearts with what we think is love, when in reality, real love is God, and that comes from a from a relationship with Christ. I ask you now to take a second to reflect on your real personal relationship with God and ask yourselves, am I currently connecting to something that is going to give me life and make me a better person? What is one thing I can do this week to make sure I stay connected to God and others? When you are connected to God, just as your phone is connected to the charger, life will be poured into your soul, and the way you look at life will be more glorifying, and you will see yourself growing in a more positive way than you would have if you were connected to something of the earth.
The scripture reading today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his, his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit and we have seen and, te and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely in, on the love of God ha that he has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God, whom, uh, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Can you think of a person you seem to have trouble with? Maybe a neighbor or a friend or even at times, a family member. Conflicts seem to happen all around us today. As soon as you open up Facebook, you immediately start scrolling to see family pictures and sports games. You also quickly find people get arguing and posting rude comments or getting into heated debates. As a child, I always found myself in conflict with my brother. We would argue all day about who would get to play Mario on the Wii, or if I fouled him or not while we played basketball in the driveway. We would fight for the last bit of Honey Nut Cheerios in the box, and for who got to ride in the front seat of the car. I remember a few specific arguments where we would get angry at each other and wouldn't talk for a few days at times. Though we had our troubles, he was still my brother. And in the end, we would always end up forgiving each other and working things out. Even as siblings, my brother and I saw things differently at times. Why is this important? Why does it matter if people are different and may not have a connection at times? It seems today as if everyone is different and having no connections with people is fine. How can we overcome these conflicts and show love towards one another. One place we can look for answers is the letter we've come to know as 1 John, which was written during the early stages of Christianity. As the gospel was being spread, things weren't as different from our times today as you might think. Christianity was moving across the lands to different groups of people, and they were beginning to come together as one Christian community. People from cities and countries all around began to join into Christianity to form a whole body of love through God. Everyone had their differences back then, just as we, as we are seeing around our world today. People that looked different, talked different, acted different, and had different beliefs. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21, we are told about the love God has through us. God's love is perfected inside of us. God loves us and wants us to love Him in return. Though no one has ever seen God, 
We have faith in Him, and we love Him. To know God is to love Him. He wants us all to love Him, but He also wants us to love all people as we love Him, because they are all children and creations of God. God's love is meant to connect all of us. At times, it can be hard to coexist with someone or something that isn't similar to you. Your coworker may do things differently than you would, or a friend might have a different opinion on a social issue. Things like this could bring tension or arguments at times, but we have to remember that no matter what the differences are or who they're with, we are all still God's creations, and He loves us. Even without major differences, it can be hard at times to love someone and get along with them. I remember many games and practices on the football field when it was hard to love my coach after he screamed his head off at me. I found it hard at times to love him for who he is. Then I would think about this passage and the message it portrays. Though I may not agree with the methods of coaching he chose, yelling was his way of saying, I love you, I believe in you, you can do this. Through God, I was able to get through the rough games and practices and love my coach as a person and a child of God. Imagine what our world would look like if we all loved each other as God intended us to. Conflicts would still arise, but the anger and hate behind them would be put aside. Politics would be more professional. Wars and problems between countries would be decreased and day-to-day -day interactions with people would be more enjoyable and peaceful. This all starts with spreading love to just a few people around you, as I did with my brother. After him throwing a temper tantrum and getting me in trouble, I forgave him. Think back to the many conflicts, to the person you had conflicts with, and whether it's out loud or in your head, say a quick prayer for them asking God to help you forgive them and love them as a person and a child of God. Then think about what would happen if more and more people chose to spread love to those around them. You've started a chain reaction. This love God has for us is perfect and only good will come of it. There are no differences, conflicts, or hardships that are greater than the love we have for each other. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God's grace is sufficient for.
I will be reading Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out on his way to meet an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake. Um, this, this man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah to the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This, this is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humil humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? <laughs> then Philip began <laughs> with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news of Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in my way of being baptized? And he, or he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized them. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly spoke, took Philip, and the eunuch did not see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Kassira. Have you ever heard someone say, God has been speaking to me or guiding me lately? This thought has always puzzled me. Are they literally saying God has been speaking to them directly and telling them what to do like a GPS on your phone? This made me think I was doing the whole thing wrong. I haven't been hearing any voices in my head or anyone telling me where to go or what to do. And it made me question how God speaks to me. I think we all want to hear from God, but how do we do that? Our reading from the book of Acts today features God talking very directly to someone. While our situation might be different than Philip's, I think we can still learn something. In the passage, Philip is encountered by the Holy Spirit directly, and the Spirit tells him to go walk down the road to Jerusalem. On his way, Philip encounters a eunuch who is reading some scripture. The Spirit of the Lord tells Philip to go up and ask the eunuch if he can understand the writing or if he needs any help understanding it. They both head on their way to Jerusalem and pass a body of water, and the eunuch asks to be baptized. The eunuch got baptized, and the Spirit of the Lord abruptly took Philip away. Philip was obedient to the Spirit of the Lord and followed his command because he had trust in him. Ultimately, like Philip did, God wants to guide us to share the gospel with all people. Sharing the gospel to just one person can cause a chain reaction in so many people's lives. Philip shares the word with the eunuch, and the eunuch goes straight to Jerusalem to spread God's word to many more people. If we do this in our own lives by sharing the word with non-believers, it can create somewhat of a fire in them to share the word to more and more people. What is God telling you to do? The next right thing, to love the next unlevel person you come across, to share your hope with the next hopeless person, to encourage the next, next discouraged person. In the passage, Philip is directly confronted by the Spirit of the Lord. Although some may have been encountered by God like this, God most likely shows himself in other mysterious ways. As humans, we are always distracted, whether it is our phone, school, jobs, or friends. We always have something to do. Many people may think that God has not been talking to us directly, but in reality, we have not been listening or looking for his signs. Throughout my years in youth group, we have always started by doing our highs and lows of the week, as well as thinking about where we saw God that week. This caused me to continue to see God's presence in places I hadn't before. I think we can all ask ourselves multiple times a week, 
where we saw God today, and was he trying to speak to me or guide me? Throughout this passage, God wants us to realize that he is trying to speak to us, whether it is directly or indirectly. He wants us to become more selfless by spreading his word to help others, maybe by reaching out to a friend to invite them to church, or asking someone at school what their religious thoughts are, and sharing what yours are, and what you believe what you do. It is, is, it is important to obey God with what he tells us because it can not only change our lives, but it can give us the opportunity to change other people's lives in many ways we couldn't think of. Once we stop getting caught up in our distractions, we can see that God is always trying to open doors for us or guide us on the right path. Although an encounter we face might not be like Philip's, we still have the opportunity, like him, to spread God's word to all people. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and then in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. Remember the teachings of Jesus as we gather at his table. Blessed are you who hunger for justice, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who thirst for righteousness, for you will drink deeply of the cup of joy. Blessed are you who yearn for reconciliation, for you will find peace. Blessed are you who are persecuted in the name of religion, for yours is the commonwealth of heaven. Blessed are we, for Christ calls us to his table, where there is room for everyone and plenty for all. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Holy God, you made the world to hum in harmony. You listened and you called it good. In time, we broke off from singing the song and went our own way. But you called us back, and when the time was right, you came in flesh and blood to live as one of us. In Christ, dividing walls are broken down. No differences, all children of yours. You are there on every spectrum, in every color, at every table, people of every age. We come to be with you, you beyond the galaxies, you under the oceans, you inside the leaves, you pouring down rain, you opening the flowers, you feeding the insects, you giving us your image, you carrying us through the waters, you holding us in the night, your smile on Sarah and Abraham, your hand with Moses and Miriam, your words through Deborah and Isaiah. You lived as Jesus among us, healing, teaching, dying, rising, inviting us all to your feast. By your Spirit, make us one. By your Spirit, make us whole. By your Spirit, make this bread and wine your body and blood, that we may know communion with you and with each other. As people united in you, hear our prayers. For justice for all races, for welcome of all people, for basic needs for all neighbors, for peace for all countries, for, fe for healing for all who are sick. You know, O oh God, the needs of all these whom we love. Hold them, hear them, strengthen them, and us. Today we also pray for students and teachers, parents and administrators, for everyone who is trying to learn or educate, for everyone wondering about next steps in school, especially seniors thinking about life after high school. Take our hearts, our lives, our hands. Mold us, change us, and send us out that we may be your body in the world you love so much. For the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to scripture, on the night of his arrest, when Jesus was at table with his disciples, he took bread. And having given thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And having given thanks to God, he poured it out. saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant. It's been shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. And as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember Jesus Christ and we proclaim his saving death until he comes again in glory. Friends, these are the gifts of God. They are for you, the people of God. Let us keep Christ's feast. And as we gather at Christ's table where our Lord is already seated, where Christ, as our host, bids us join him, whether you are with Christ by yourself or with a household of fellow believers, I invite you to remind yourself as you take communion today that this is the bread of life, and this is the cup of love given for you. Share now with Christ the feast that he has prepared. This is the prayer after communion. Nourishing God, thank you for inviting us to your table where all are welcome, and for feeding us with the bread of life, and taking away our thirst with a cup of love. As you have filled our lives with hope and love, may we be a source of your love and hope. For others who hunger and thirst, for good news, amen. Our prayers of the people today will follow the five finger prayer for children. Each finger represents a group that we pray for. Let us pray. 
First, we have our thumb located closest to our body. We pray for those closest to us, our friends and our family. God protect them and walk with them as they journey through life. The second finger, or pointer finger, reminds us to pray for people who point the way. We thank God for them and bring them peace. These are leaders in our life, such as teachers and pastors. We offer God our thanksgiving for them and ask them to help them in their important work. Next we have the middle finger. The tallest finger on our hand represents the people that look over us. We pray for the world's leaders, and not just for their peace, but also for the peace they bring upon us. With our ring finger, the weakest finger, we pray for the weak, sick, impoverished, and oppressed. We pray for those still suffering from COVID-19, and pray for a rapid approach to a fully vaccinated society. God, please help all those who deal with overwhelming challenges, and provide them with strength to overcome them. Last, we have the pinky. God wants to hear from each of us as well. The smallest finger is just as important as the others. And it is even more significant to God for us to pray for ourselves after praying for others first. God, we ask for growth just like the vine in the scripture passage. Help us grow in mind, body, and spirit. Lord, abide in all those who need your love and guidance. Help us to hold fast the vine and bear fruit of your love. Show us the way to use our hands to do your will. We pray all these things, and for all those in the world, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. into the world, know that God's love lives in you, and will go with you as you go out into the world.